Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. It is I, Imperial Dane, with another propaganda cast for you, my marvelous viewers. And today we do have a one versus one on Stuart stuff. Yes, indeed, it is Stuart stuff, not the most offshore map. And it has also received some changes, but I'm a bit unclear on those. Although I do believe they are pertinent to the placement of resources here and here. I do believe, but correct me if I am wrong. Anyhow, we do have a nice view here of a pair of Opel Blitz trucks. Sadly, not actual units for the Wehrmacht, albeit that would have been fun. And I suppose a more functional Wehrmacht officer would also be fun, but he's sadly currently a bit of a waste of resources. Anyhow, on to the match. We do have a fight against the Americans. 29th Infantry Division, hurrah, versus elements of the Wehrmacht. 352nd Grenadier Division under War Producer. Clearly, some former Krupp Steel employee who has found himself as an officer in the Wehrmacht. And here we Ready have the true dictator, apparently a bit of an eccentric within the US Army, but every army I do believe had its eccentrics. Some wore kilt and walked around with claymore swords. I do believe the British and the Wehrmacht, in fact, had to have those officers. Anyhow, let's get on with this map, and as the two sides are getting up, and I do believe I've forgotten to turn down things a bit here, so let's get back to that. And while we are on that, Stuart stuff is a rather industrialized map, plenty of buildings, plenty of fire blocking elements like buildings that means you can have for example as the American have a lot more maneuvering elements you can easily get around and sneak about and take points which of course as the Wehrmacht you can have a, a much harder time actually covering points even in a decent manner because there's so little open territory and your units are really dependent on long range so of course you will try your best to get some barbed wire up to at least hinder movement and of course increase the efficiency of your own weapons and of course we see the usual Wehrmacht quarters and barracks start from either side. Fuel points of the high yields are right over there, otherwise they are medium and low yield. Also, the medium yield right there, so in fact, most of the fuel of any higher kind is right there in the farthest away spot. Some strategic points covering them as well. So a bit of everything. And we see a MG42 team out from Mr. War Producer, and we see at the same time the true dictator, captain of the 29th Able Company, sending out his riflemen. So nothing as far really interesting there. MG42 sitting up in a nice overwatch position right here. Certainly one of the easier points to hold. And setting up right there in the hopes of starting those Americans, but of course, there we go. Riflemen receiving a few bursts from the MD-42, but are quick to get into this work area's administrative building and set up positions there, which will certainly render them very much harder to get for the MD-42. Engineers moving here, not taking this point, though. I'm mean, curious to who they're expecting to actually l link up these areas. And we see the riflemen sneaking about in the center, and we have some full screen here. Yes, indeed, full screen here on the march. Funny little chaps with their car 98K and the officer or this NCO with a Sturmgewehr. Although it was a bit rare, most NCOs in fact had the MP40 actually. Well, that wouldn't really be so good at range though. It would a bit negate the American advantage up close. Anyhow, MG42 setting up riflemen sneaking about there in the north. Perhaps they've spotted it, perhaps they've not, because otherwise those... Yes, looks like they are onto it. But so is war producer, the MG42 team, quick to move about and set up. Oh dear, these riflemen are quite out in the open. MG42 will unleash hell on them. Yes, there we go. Riflemen will soon be suppressed unless they get out of there, and there we go. Pioneers though taking quite some fire, will also need to get out of there or they will be lost. And the MG42 getting flanked by Riflemen, good move by the true dictator. 
assaulting from numerous positions, thus overpowering the MG42 and forcing an into retreat. And had he been really sneaky or at least bold, he might even have been able to clear out the gun and take it for himself. But for to the great luck of Mr. War Producer, that did not happen. The 352nd can retain the MG42 for now. First clip is engaging these engineers, forcing the engineers into a retreat. But I imagine some riflemen will move out to try and deal with them. And further, MG 42 is apparently deciding that one is not enough. He gets a second one. So he will have a small MG 42 platoon soon. And riflemen just barely outside the arc of the MG 42. A bit of luck there, and Rifleman are flanking, and the MG42 is not turning. Oh dear, this could easily end up very, very, very badly unless it retreats. And even then, it might get killed on the retreat. No, it does manage to get out, and this will also force the other MG42 to retreat. That was quite unfortunate positioning of those MG42s by Mr. War Producer. And his full screen is out here, are suffering similar tragic results as Rifleman are. Uh, Ousting them from those positions as well, certainly not looking good. But he is quick to get a Krieg barracks, perhaps hoping to get some grenadiers or possibly some half tracks or a mortar. And at the same time, the true dictator is setting up the supply yard to lessen the supply chain and, of course, decrease the upkeep required for the riflemen. Those riflemen being quite greedy. Bastards in terms of supplies compared to your average Wehrmacht soldier, who by that time was quite used to not actually subsisting on so much compared to the riflemen. Although they did get better things to eat, apparently, since the Americans had a tendency with the closer you got to the front, the worse quality of the food you got, whereas with the Wehrmacht, the closer you were to the front, the better food you got. I'm not entirely sure how that made sense for the Americans, but there you go. And we we'll see some riflemen. Not entirely sure what they're doing. Are they trying to put down a mine? No, no doctrine there. That's a bit curious. Just standing behind this huge pile of wooden trash. As, ah, uh, yes, Mr. Petlovsky once more. What a mysterious character. Probably not. For all we know, it's probably just a name of one of the game designers, as they had a tendency of using those names in the game. So, for all we know, that probably was one of the designers called Pitlevsky. Anyhow, Riveman getting exposed to MG42 fire, suppressed, will soon be pinned unless they get out of there or get into that building. But apparently, they have better things to do than actually get out of there, and now they are pinned. Larger Riveman movements in the center, and we do have four Riveman teams out for the true dictator. And we see the motor pool going up. Not inside the shoulder here, and we have a mortar, in fact. From war producer, no grenadiers and pound instead. And folks, can this with MP40s getting over? Man, we'll have to get out of there. No MG42 to actually cover them. I'm a bit curious why that MG42 wasn't placed up a bit further to actually provide cover for those folks, can And they certainly paid dearly for now laying in a heap of wounded and possibly dead troops as well. Not good at all. And Rifleman skulking about in the des distance, really acting as a bit of a threat to the German forces, not entirely sure how to handle this threat. And in fact it certainly looks like war producer is on the back foot at the moment. Getting ousted at all points whereas Mr True Dictator is quickly going ahead for vehicles. I suspect we might see a pack coming out of that creek bags now since you'll certainly be expecting some sort should be expecting at least as well some sort of vehicular force from Mr. True Dictator since he's seen plenty of riflemen but no BARs which usually means that the opponent is going for M8s or something similar. Generally you, could you can make such assumptions based on what your opponent has and of course how much time has passed. And generally if you see a lot of riflemen but no actual heavy weapons or LMG is being equipped to them, you can usually suspect he's going to straight for vehicles. Whereas, of course, if he's getting a lot of infantry and upgrading them, you can of course expect a heavier presence. But then you should perhaps also begin to suspect that he might actually throw some either rangers or airborne into it or go for tanks. 
In fact, he might go for both there. Grenadiers running right out into the open. My goodness, what is he doing? And he's keeping the MP40 equipped Fulch Grenadiers at range instead of trying to flank around here. Mortar fire though, helping a bit, but really this is an unfortunate engagement he's got going here. Keeping the MP40 submachine guns at range while keeping the Grenadiers up close out in the open. That's... Not even unorthodox tactics, that's just bad tactics. But at least he does have some mortar fire to provide some assistance there, which is certainly not a bad thing. But the M8 is near, and of course those grenadiers mean he will not be having a pack out to meet this rather dangerous threat, considering how early it is and what he actually has to fight it with. So that can certainly end up biting him in the ass. 350 seconds, not really showing much infantry so far. Mostly relying on support units throwing in what they have. Wheels in crease, ready to go. And Pioneer getting sniped by the 37mm gun on that Greyhound. Not nice for that Pioneer. And Fell Rifleman swarming forth. Large horde of infantry. Almost Soviet levels for sure. In particular, considering they haven't even been equipped with any Enemy light machine down. guns, so just rifles, which again certainly seems to be a bit more Soviet style. MP40 equipped Fulch Grenadiers once more acting as a security screen for the MG42. But against that M8, they won't have much to do, but they will be able to perhaps delay it. Mortar round damaging the engine, that's certainly a stroke of luck for the German gunners, and there we go, another shot on the M8, another shot, and it will be gone. No, the Oh dear, the pack did not pursue and instead was cloaked, which certainly means it was the moon slow slower. Rifleman now charging head, Fulch Grenadier is looking in a dire spot, but he is getting veterans he won, which will certainly make it a bit more safe in the longer run since we'll be able to heal themselves. And generally getting veterans he is recommendable as the Wehrmacht. And it can uh, sometimes end up very badly. If you forget it, I know because I have a tendency of doing it. It's certainly one of the things I myself as a Wehrmacht player need to work on. Oh dear, what a sneaky move. Flamethrowers moving in on that pack. Can certainly clear it out unless that pack can get out of this warehouse area. And into the range of that MG42. Apparently no such luck, but there we go. And Americans pulling out. Pioneers apparently moving in. MG42 setting up and firing away at those riflemen. Things looking a bit dire here in the east. MG42 setting up here, but the right engineers are hiding there. And could, for example, flank around here, or they could move right into the firing arc of the MG42. There we go. Perhaps not the best move. Wehrmacht forces setting up for a fresh assault. Further grenadiers and Panzerschex now being equipped, or a kitten Panzerbüchsen 45, I believe. 54, I believe it was. Bit of a curious designation, but there were several attempts, and I do believe it was after they.